Aaron Phillips, Regional Manager, 360 Yield Center with you today. Today we're going to talk about our 360 bullet point and I'm going to offer some best practices for you. If we look at our 360 bullet point that we have here, you can see that we have a 14 inch wing and the goal of the 360 bullet point is to lift and fracture the soil. So as this point is going through the ground, it's lifting and it's fracturing the soil. It's eliminating those berms that we traditionally see between OEM ripper points. By lifting and fracturing the soil, we're completely eliminating those berms. We're allowing water to go through the soil so much easier and also allowing the roots to be able to access the whole soil profile. So when we're installing our bullet points, first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the point fits firmly, that it seats firmly onto the shank. So when you put it on there, make sure it goes on all the way, make sure there's not a lot of free play there. If there is some free play there, you want to look at the shank and make sure that it's not worn. If it is, definitely recommend replacing the shank. The next thing is as we put the bullet point on there, we want to make sure that the bolt goes through and that it's not over tightened. If we tighten the bolt too much, it could bind and it could shear it off. So after you put this on, we put the bolt through, make sure you can still spin the bolt and so that it's still free enough that it won't bind. After we get the bullet point installed, then we need to check to make sure that the ripper is level. There's a few different ways that we can do this. The first is put the ripper in the ground, go ahead and drive ahead, get up to operating speed, and then stop and get out. Leave the ripper in the ground, and then go out and check the discs. Make sure that the front disc gangs and the back disc gangs are at the same depth. If you have a tape measure, go out there, eye it up however you want to do it. Just make sure that they're equally in the ground. Another way to tell is just by looking at the horizontal beam that runs from the front to the back of the ripper. Eye that up, put a level on it, make sure that that is level. If the ripper is not level, we could wear out the points a lot quicker than they should. So once we know that the ripper is level, then we have to make sure that we're operating at the correct depth. A rule of thumb is to look at your spacing of your shanks and then divide that by two, and that's a good starting point for your depth. So if your shanks are on 24 inch spacings, a good starting spot would be 12 inches deep. After you get your starting spot, then you can go out there and you can check to make sure that you're getting below that hard pan. The hard pan, pretty easy to find. If you have a probe, you can go out there, push down into the ground, and find out where that hard pan is. Again, we want to be just below that hard pan, so make sure that when we're lifting and fracturing, we're getting rid of that hard pan. Another way to tell where your depth is is just simply going behind the ripper and digging. You can dig down, Again, make sure that point is getting below the hard pan. Once we have the ripper level, we have it at the correct depth, then we're ready to go out and run. Um, one more key point is when you're working on the, the ripper with the 360 bullet points, make sure that you do not set it down on a hard surface. Uh, don't set the points down on the shop floor or on the approach. So make sure you're using your cylinder stops when you're, if you're going to be working on your bullet points so they're not putting pressure on the points um, from the hard surface. So using the 360 bullet points, we have three different options here. We have our HW. This is a one-piece cast system. Works great for sandy conditions, sandy soils, where it's going to be high wear. Um, these are going to be able to handle that better than our other points, and it's going to wear great. When we look at our bullet HW, that's going to go on an inch and a quarter shank. 
rippers out there with inch and a quarter shanks that we can that we can install on are the Case IH 870, 875, and 690, the Krauss 4850 and 4855, the Salford 9700 CTS and 9800 DRH, John Deere 510, 512, 2700, 2720, and 2730. If we get into rocky conditions, then we want to go with our steel point. Uh, this is going to handle those rocks um, better than the cast point will. Uh, that's our HD point. Bullet HD will go on an inch and a quarter shank, and the model that that goes on is the Landall 2410 and 2430. The Bullet HD also goes on an inch and a half shank. The model that has an inch and a half shank is the Case IH DMI 530, 730, and 9300. And then we have our ultimate point, which is our HD+. Plus. This is a combination of the two. It has the steel base, so it can handle the points, but then it also has these chrome strips that are brazed on here. So it's going to be able to handle the sandy conditions and it's going to wear good as well. The Bullet HD Plus also goes on inch and a quarter shanks. Models that we support are the Case IH 870, 875, and 690, the Krauss 4850 and 4855, the Salford 9700 CTS and 9800 DRH, John Deere 510, 512, 2700, 2720, and 2730. So by following these best practices and using our 360 bullet points, you're going to achieve maximum fracture. The maximum fracture is going to get rid of those berms out there. It's going to allow water to go down through the soil profile so much easier, as well as allow the plants to go down and access the complete soil profile to find the nutrients that it needs.